Hi and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. I'm Dan and thanks for checking out my channel. I'm going to be passing on all the tips, tricks, and accessory builds that I made for my airbrush area in my garage throughout my last past 20 years. I know how I struggled when I was a beginner, so hopefully some of my videos may make your life a little bit easier and help you move forward in your airbrushing endeavors. So if you like this content, hit that subscribe button down below, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future content. So with that, let's get started. Hi, today on the Airbrush Garage, we're gonna be talking about tip dry and how to deal with it. So let's get into it. So in my case, I'm out in a garage and I don't have a very controlled environment situation where you know I have different humidity every day, I have different temperatures, different times of the days, the temperature's always changing. So the real answer to is, well, how do you mix your, your reducers with your paint that you don't get any tip dry? The answer is you can't. You're always gonna get tip dry no matter what you do. But what I like to say is I like to get the paint to flow through the gun where I can get the longest nice flow out of the gun before I get the tip dry, okay? Now, when you're in an uncontrolled environment with different humidities and temperatures, it's a moving target. And that's the real answer. It's a moving target. Unless you're in a room that is the same temperature every day, uh, the same humidity, you know, totally climate controlled, you would know an exact science of how to mix your paint every time you go to airbrush. But that's not going to happen when you're in your garage. So it really depends on that day. So I'm going to give you the best tips that I came up with that I think for you to be able to spray in an uncontrolled environment and get the best results. So let's get started with that. So my first recommendation is I don't care what kind of paint you use, what brand paint you use, use the reducers that come with the paint. A lot of technology, a lot of science, a lot of time and effort from that paint manufacturer has been put into making their reducers to react correctly with their paints. Uh, you know, it, it really does bug me sometimes when I, I see uh, really good airbrushers out there giving some really good tips and then they, they, they tell you the solution that they use because they're using a water-based paint that they use water from their tap or they use water and a little bit of a dish soap and they come up with all of these solutions. Um, first of all, those solutions are not consistent. What we're trying to look for here, as we're talking about today, is consistency. And with a moving target of inconsistency of the type of environment you're in, don't do that. Okay, it's not that much more expensive. You know, a, a bottle of reducer. What's just bottle of reducer? You're using drops of it at a time. It lasts you a long time. It's between four and eight dollars. A big bottle might be between you know ten and sixteen dollars. This thing will last you a year probably. So hey, go out and buy the reducers. That is the first major tip, tip number one, to start reducing your tip dry. So in my case, I'm just going to be using these as an example today because this is the type of paint that I use. I use Createx paints, and I have three different reducers for Createx paints, and. I have the three different reducers because of the different conditions I'm in. So the 4012, for example, if it is a day that's between like say, you know, 65 and 75, pretty low humidity, this works really well with my paint. What I like to start off with is 100% paint, 50% reducer. So again, if it's 10 drops of paint, it'd be five drops of reducer. So Again, the 4012 for me works really well with temperatures that are, you know, mild temperatures uh, of between 65 and 75 degrees, low humidity. Now, the 4011 they came out with, um, they came out with this, I believe, to combat, combat an issue that they had with uh, their Candy 2O paints. The 4012 was not mixing very well with them. It wasn't mixing well with the, it, not so much the Candy 2Os, but it wasn't mixing well with their balancing clear. So even though it works really, really well um, with, the, uh, with their paints, it does not work well with their balancing clear. So they came out with the 4011 to rectify that situation. But what they found is the 4011 works really well with their paints. So I will use either one of these depending on the temperature or the day. 
This is basically good for about the same temperature uh, of this right here. It does say high temperature, it says 80 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So again, in the summertime, this seems to work really well. Honestly, it's pretty new to me, so I haven't tried it in the wintertime yet. So uh, all summer, I really have been using just this product along with the next product I'm gonna tell you about is a 4020 automotive reducer. 4020 automotive reducer is for high heat uh, and high humidity. Uh, it is uh, an automotive reducer, and they say automotive reducer just because it mixes with their, automo uh, their auto air colors, but it also mixes with the Createx and the Wicked colors and probably several other paints out there it'd be good for water-based paints. But it works really, really well in the summertime. I use a cocktail a lot of time of, when I said 50% reducer to the paint, 25% of this and 25% of this, of the 4011. So you got 4011, you got 4020. Right now in the summertime, in a high humidity environment, these are my go-to reducers. Again, the 4012, for, for the Createx paint only, not the clears. I go with this on a normal temperature day, what I'd like to call between 65 to 75 degrees and low humidity. So with those rules in place, as long as I stick to those, I find my tip dry is minimal. So when I say minimal, what I'm talking about is if I can get 10 to 15 minutes of flow through my gun without tip dry, I consider that very good. It doesn't matter what you do, you're going to get tip dry. You have a very small hole at the end of this airbrush. You have air rushing through it and, and paint that dries quickly. You're going to have tip dry. What you're trying to do is minimize the tip dry. So with that said, um, depending on the brush you're using, you know, I use three different brushes. But depending on the brush you're using, like this brush right here has a, a, a 0.3 needle in it. Okay, now if you're using a 0.5 needle or siphon fed gun, you may even get longer to, to no tip dry for you know extended periods of time. Um, but one of the other things that I like to do with the tip dry is I'm gonna show you is I don't spray with a needle cap. I take the needle cap off of it no matter what gun I'm using because the technique I'm going to show you here is a more advanced technique and you just got to be careful with it when you're learning it and even when you're advanced with it. I've bent some needles doing this because I don't even look at it anymore as I'm airbrushing. I come down and I just clean out or off the tip by pinching <clears throat> the needle between my fingers and I have a little bit of a fingernail so it helps but Okay, but you really got to get in there close because where your tip dry is, yeah, you can clean it off your needle, but your tip dry is right where that needle comes out of that gun. So that's the hardest part to clear. So you'll see airbrushers doing it all the time. They're airbrushing. They come down here. You know, you see them doing that. They're not even paying attention to it. It's just a technique that after a while you develop. But I will say that it is rough on your needle and you can bend your needle. I have bent needles in the past. So a technique that I'm gonna show you next, I think works even better. It does take a little bit longer. It distracts you from your artwork because you can't just come down here because you know I'll be studying my artwork and I'll be cleaning my needle with my fingers. Whereas now with this technique, I'd have to stop. What I do is I take a little bit of my reducer doesn't matter which one, put it in my cup, okay? And then I take a paintbrush, put some reducer on it, and I'm gonna clean the tip of that needle just like this. And it works really well because the little bristles really get in close on that. Now, I will warn you of something. I just put a lot of reducer on that. <clears throat> so. What happens is, is sometimes the reducer will lay right up on top here a little bit and then as your airbrush and fall down onto the needle and when that happens, you're spraying and then it hits the needle and just poof, puts a spray of reducer onto your artwork. So when I do that, I'll take a paper towel and very carefully, 
I'll just literally poke my needle right through the paper towel and just dab it just so I get the, the reducer off of it. And I could see I had some reducer on there just because I don't want that going on my artwork. So that took a little longer because I was explaining it. It's really not that bad. I'm spraying. I take my brush. I brush it off a little bit, a couple sprays. All right. But what I do find is that really, really does get in there and clean it. So I use a combination of the two. So what you're looking to do with tip dry, in my opinion, is you're looking to get a good flow out of your gun. If you can get a good 10 minutes, you know, even five minutes, five, 10 minutes without having to clean that tip. I think, you know, I think you're doing good. Um, I know a lot of people out there, especially when you're first beginning, it drives you nuts. You're like, how do I stop this tip dry? You're not going to stop it. Okay. It's just part of airbrushing. But what you could do is you could take steps to reduce the tip dry. So, you, you know, there's nothing worse when, than when you're trying to airbrush and it's not flowing out of your gun and you don't know why and you're pulling your trigger back and you're not getting any paint when and where you want the paint. Okay, it's important that when you pull that, when you push down, you pull back on that trigger that you're getting paint every time that you want to see that paint. Okay, it's very frustrating when you don't. So the other thing I could tell you is with the reducers is I start at my 50-50 as I said uh, the 50% reducer to, to, to the 100% paint, that's my starting point. On a very hot and humid day, I'm going to probably more than likely have to add more reducer. So I'll just keep adding a couple drops until I get the flow that I want. I've already had to reduce the paint down to where I call it breaking the paint, where it's almost just straight reducer. And you really don't want that. Okay, so on those type of days, some days, honestly, if it's just too hot and humid, I just pack it in. And, you know, maybe I'll come back later on at night when the temperature drops a little bit. Uh, but there's nothing more frustrating than trying to paint something um, on a day where your gun's just not cooperating with you. So you can take that and reduce your paints down. And I do. I reduce them down. I probably go sometimes 75% when I'm dealing with a very fine needle of like a 0.15 needle. I'll reduce them down to probably 60, 75% somewhere in there. So at that point, I'm very transparent, but I like to work very transparent. But you start getting past that, you start breaking the paint. So you gotta be careful of that too. And again, that comes with a little bit of experience, but well, that's all I got for you. I hope these tips help uh, because there is nothing more frustrating than tip dry, especially when you're learning. So I hope you like this video. Um, if you do, please hit the subscribe button down below. Give it a thumbs up, maybe. Appreciate that. And from my garage, yours, keep on painting. Hi guys, thanks for coming by the Airbrush Garage. If you like this video, check out some of my other videos for all your airbrush tune-ups. And if you like content like this, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell so you get future notifications. Share it out with your family and your friends. Really appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video and keep on painting.